Hello and welcome to the Patron Saints of Pop Culture podcast. As always, I am your co-saint, Miguel Covarrubias. And I am Kathy Covarrubias. And today, let's talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, for those of you who have not yet seen the movie, we will be talking about the entire film. So if you have not yet uh, seen it, please Google it, go and do so. I thought you were going to say, go and Google it. Go and Google it. <laughs> no, I, I will not say... I guess if you want to cheat, that's one yeah, way you could do it. <laughs> you can uh, go and Google it if you want. Um... But uh, this will be also a uh, short episode because, honest, well, we'll get to that in the review a little bit about what we thought about the movie. But um, it's uh, it's not one for overanalyzing, I don't think. Uh, yeah. I think it's got uh, some good points, and they're they're really upfront. But it's not uh, it's not something that's su- going to be super heavy. So uh, we'll get to, we'll talk about that more in our review. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, so speaking of which, let us uh, summarize and review uh, this movie. Okay. Uh, summarize. Uh, Scott Lang is under house arrest now after the events of uh, Captain America: Civil War, also known as Avengers Two Point Five, and uh, is tasked with helping get uh, Janet Van Dyne back into the uh, regular sized world. Is that a way to call sure, it? Sure, yeah, that's a good, yeah, okay. regular size bird world. Yep. Um, let's see. How am I? I don't know what else to do or say anything different. That's the plot. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I guess I could add that. Oh, during this time while he's in house arrest, he's trying to, um, still, like convince the authorities he's still in house arrest but he's actually not like in his house and so he's trying to be all sneaky about it and there's a large ant involved okay right i don't know what else to add he gets giant again i don't know (laughs) it's the first time in the mcu that they use giant man Mm -hmm. so as a moniker not as uh you know you saw him in captain america civil war as giant man. As giant man, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, my review was that I think it was a fantastic break. Uh, it was obviously uh, it was a fun kind of uh, lighthearted uh, movie, and uh, really until uh, the uh, mid credit and end credit scenes, where you really hit with kind of more of the heavy stuff that came from uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Um, I will give it a blessing. I, I would really say that it was a great, uh, great summer romp movie, a heist movie in the uh, in the sense that the original Ant Man was a was a heist movie, and so therefore this one was also a heist movie, but a lot less Edgar Wright. Uh, you did see some of his uh, his fingerprints on this a bit, but it wasn't uh, yeah. it wasn't as Edgar Wright e yeah as uh, the first one was. Yep. Um, I also enjoyed it. Um, I, I would kind of put it in its own separate category versus the other Marvel movies because Ant-Man is more of the like comedy aspect Mm -hmm. of it. So, um, I, I mean, it's, it's good in its own separate category. Like I don't, it's almost as if I don't want to put it up against the other movies because it is so different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but it's still good. Well, and I think this is what uh, Marvel's original plan was for things. This is why they hired a, a horror director to do Doctor Strange. This is why they hired Edgar Wright to do uh, Ant-Man was because Edgar Wright does these uh, comedy movies very well with a very serious kind of themes to it. And this is why I think that uh, – this is why I think this one was not one for overanalyzing was because – the person who stepped in afterwards mm-hmm. wasn't Edgar Wright. Yeah, it was. It was. It was meant to be fun, and it was meant to be just a heist movie, and not something to be very, you know, like these are heavy themes for you to think about. These are just you know generic themes. Mm, I have an idea. Yeah, I think the reason why they put it in this order was so then we could take a break from the heartache we experienced. Well, until the mid. Credit yeah. and end credit scenes. Yeah, but I think I think this was them going, maybe we need to be a little bit nice to our audience and kind of give them something that they will, you know, not cry over. 
well, I mean, this is this plays on one of my like the mid credit scenes was like one of my like deepest fears is like uh, being like subject to being alone that you would never ever see another another human being ever ever again. Yeah, and uh, like. I, I feel for Scott in that mid credit scene, and I, like I don't know how long he's going to spend in the quantum realm. Or... I had more feelings at the end of that scene than I did at the end of the Last Adventures movie. Yeah, because you're heartless. Because I am heartless. We've already we've already reconciled this in mm-hmm. Avengers: Infinity War. Yeah, I did not cry. I yeah. was not shocked. I was like, it's okay, everybody. They're going to come back. Oh, we <laughs> talked about that. <laughs> yeah, check 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 out, out that episode. <laughs> Um, so, uh, one of the things that I noticed throughout this entire movie was that, uh, one of the big themes was that you cannot just rely on yourself, that everyone needs help, that just like ants, ants need their colony, that, uh, everyone needs, you know, somebody to kind of lean on. We all need somebody to lean on. Thanks, honey. Yes. <laughs> um, each of the characters kind of moves past this idea of individualism. I mean, you have uh, Hank uh, Pym kind of moving past this idea that he can do it on his own. You you saw him interact with uh, um, man. I completely forgot the character's name, and we didn't write him down the this professor time. The professor, the professor, helping yes. ghost. Yes, Morpheus. <laughs> uh, that. Uh, with his interaction with him and with anybody else basically saying that he is – he's just a horrible person to work with because he's just so focused on himself. And, you know, you had that scene where Paul Rudd uh, kind of embodied that other character uh-huh. uh, for that brief moment where Janet was, um, uh, I would say, possessing him. Sure, sure. That's a good – yeah. And uh, you saw that moment where he was – where he – where Hank says to her, you know – I, I, you were the only person I could work with. You were the only one who would who would uh, push back against my ideas and and push me to be a better person. And I think this is I think this really goes to help him as well as Hope Van Dyne realize that that they need other people mm-hmm. that they can't just do it on their own because you know they're who they think they are. Yeah. Well, part of um, Hope's was it Hope? Yeah, Hope is the young. Yeah. The daughter. Um, the part... New Wasp. <laughs> new Wasp. The part with her is that the reason why she was acting the way she was doing was because she kind of felt a little betrayed, we we found out, because Scott didn't take her along on the big adventure. I'd be kind of hurt, too, if I, if you came back from someplace and I'm like, where did you go off to? And I went then you and were, fought with uh, Captain America. Yeah, and I'd be like, uh, thanks for the invite, I guess. Yeah, I'd be kind of upset, too. I, I kind of understand. Well, you still don't want to see my um, pictures from when I went to England. Exactly. I was about to bring that up. <laughs> like, the time that you left me and went to England without me. It was a pilgrimage that was planned beforehand, and you weren't there. Um, but Yeah, but we were totally engaged at the time of yeah. the planning. All right. Uh, so right. I'm never going to let this go. I know. <laughs> uh, and the idea that uh, you can't really do it on your own. And like I said before, this is a very, you know, kind of a very surface level theme. It's not something that's like very like, oh, my goodness, big revelation in the entire movie. But it's like everybody knows this. Everybody yeah. knows that you can't do these things on your own, even though we all have this kind of pride built up in ourselves that it's it's hard for us to ask well, for help. especially Americans. Well, yeah. I mean, her whole society is built on individualism. Yeah. And this is the – I saw a crazy, crazy meme this week talking about the difference between a republic and a democracy. And quite honestly, it was full of horrible, horrible misinterpreted facts and just misinformation. And anyway, uh, the whole idea was that uh, in a republic, then you can uh, – like it's all about individuals and that you won't have the uh, the majority take bullying you and making sure that you have to go with their rules and blah, blah, blah. And No, 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 no. It's not the way a country works. You can't have a country work on this idea of individualism. A country works when everybody works together. Mm-hmm. And see, I think this is – I think this is why Ant-Man at its timing was such a good movie was because it was a good break for us to remember that, yeah, we do need each other. We do need other people to help us out because we can't 
do any of this stuff on our own. Yeah. We can't be Ant-Man on our own. We can't be Ant-Man on our own. We can't be Ant-Man, period. Because, you know, that's not the way that physics works. <laughs> Don't crush their dreams. Well, if you want to be Ant-Man, go for it. <laughs> well, and we all need these support systems. And the wonderful thing about Scott is that Scott has that support system, even from his ex-wife. Mm-hmm. And his ex-wife, were they married? What? In the uh, in Ant-Man? I, I can't remember. No, the... they were divorced in, Ant-Man, in the first No, Ant-Man. no, no, no. I know that they were divorced. I'm talking about the uh, the new guy, the other guy. Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure they were married at the time. Okay. Yep. So her new husband mm-hmm. uh, is part of his support system, which is is weird. And you know his daughter as well as well as uh, his ex con friends yep. and and so they're they're all kind of that support system helping him, and uh, he helps them as well. Uh, you saw. How much that uh, Michael Pena's character relied on Scott as well. Yep. And, uh, you know, it, it's that support system that, that we all need. And we talked about support systems uh, a few episodes ago in one of our one of our episodes. We also talked about our need for a break from, like, heavy, like, really in-depth themes a few weeks ago as well as mm-hmm. our, on our meta episode. But... Uh, you know, this is something that we all need. We do need these support systems. We do need each other. We do need help from time to time. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a big group. I mean, it could just be, maybe it is just one other person that you need to help, you know, when your support system. Maybe it is a couple of different groups. Like Scott has, like he has like different pockets. Like he has his family group that is completely different than the ex-con group, which is completely different than the the um, the PIMS. Yeah. Yeah. And they all meet different needs for Scott, Mm -hmm. which, you know, I think uh, Scott is probably the most uh, emotionally healthy individual by the end of this uh, movie, realizing that he has all those support systems. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Except for the fact that he's now lost in the quantum realm. Yeah. You know. Well, he needs somebody to lean on now. We all need someone to lean on. (laughs) Thanks, honey. Um, So another thing, another um, theme thing, theme. Whatever. <laughs> That's like pretty, um, I guess, knocks you in the face kind of a thing that happens is compassion and the need for kind of looking at people's motives for the things that they do. Um, we see that one of the, the main good villains is Ghost, who we learn one of the reasons why she does the evil things that she does, one, she was trained to do it. I mean, not her fault. She was kind of like pretty much kidnapped. Yeah. Al- almost almost um, Black Widow kind of. Not nearly as bad as Black Widow, though. But yeah. in terms of like being trained as a child to do bad things. But um, one of her motivations in this movie is the fact that she... She, the only reason why she's doing these evil things and stealing, stealing, um, I guess the whole entire lab (laughs) is because that she is in pain, like real deep, like debilitating pain. And I don't know if any of you have experienced pain like that before. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I think the closest I can get is childbirth. <laughs> but the good thing with childbirth is during the whole time, I just kept on telling myself, it's okay. It's good. It'll be over. This baby will be out and I and I won't hurt as bad. <laughs> like, that's what I kept on telling myself. With her, it's just like this never ending. It's just getting worse. And to be honest, I can kind of see why she would kind of go in this direction being in that much pain. If you're in that much pain for that long, even for the short time I was in for during labor, like I, I would have, I would have punched somebody in the face. I would have punched probably an elderly person in the face if it meant that I wasn't going to be in pain very much. No, serious. Like that's how much pain I was in. You, he's giving me a face right now. He was not in labor. I was in labor. So he does not know the feeling. (laughs) But I was just trying to convey the intense amount of pain and the fact that the pain overweighed my sense of, I guess, judgment? Good judgment. Okay. Yeah, my good judgment was was definitely gone. That's why you see a lot of those um, women who are in deep, like, pain during labor, the ones who never curse, 
at all, all of a sudden, like, curse like a sailor. Those women who are, like, the gentlest people known to man will, like, be, like, punching and, like, hitting their husband during the whole entire time, which I did not hit him, everybody, (laughs) during my labor. But pain makes you do crazy things sometimes. Um, And it's not just pain. I mean, you can be in a lot of stress, too. And if you get to the point to where stress overcomes, like, your, your reasonable thinking, that can also cause you to do some things you normally wouldn't do too. And that's clearly the case for ghost. And during the whole time, like even after we find out the reason why she's trying to steal the lab and trying to make herself feel better, they still, our heroes didn't try to figure out another way to help her. Like they were so focused on their ultimate goal that They couldn't see, like, the little girl who was practically in tears. Like, you could see her pain on her face. But they were so focused on their goal that they didn't even, like, really think too much about about her pain. Well, I think that's that's why um, Janet was such a great character for that, was Mm -hmm. that um, where she had, you know, gone through these decades of being alone in this quantum realm and never going to be seeing another human face again until scott suddenly shows up yeah you know is that you know she's she can see this she understands the pain that she's going through she understands you know the uh the fear and you know just all the stuff that that is going on that you know it's like yeah we're going to continue to help heal her and Mm -hmm. this is why they send you know scott back down there to get the uh, healing particles or whatever they call them at the, <laughs> at the end there that he's now stuck Floating. in the quantum realm. Yeah. Well, and it's not just like extreme stress or extreme pain, but heck, I mean, it can be something even more mild as in being tired or hungry. I mean, we've all been hangry to the point to where we will be a little bit snappy when we normally wouldn't be, or we've been so tired to where We honestly don't care about anybody else's problems but our own. And so I guess when we come across those people who are acting the way that you know isn't normal, like they're they're they are being a little bit more snappy. They are being a little bit more mean than they normally would be. Maybe just kind of, I don't know, open up your heart a little bit and just ask them, hey, you know, what's going on? Like I, like, I understand that, you know, you're going through whatever you're going through right now, but is there anything that I can do to help? Because you're normally not like this. And maybe we can, by doing that, help prevent them from going more extreme in their, I guess, bad decision making. Only you can prevent super villain, sil- yeah, super villainy. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't go that far. Like, I'm trying I'm trying to bring this more, like, into the normal day, everyday interactions. Not like, hey, you can prevent crime from happening. <laughs> more like, you can prevent a coworker from yelling at another coworker. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. But, um... Well, it's, it's part of that, you know, we all need community. We all need somebody to lean on. And it, being that community for somebody else... Even when you, even when you yourself need help, and I think this is, you know, something that we see uh, in each character, mm-hmm. you know, is is going through that is that uh, being able to be part of that community and that support system when you're when you yourself are in pain, uh, whether it be physical or emotional or what have you. Yeah, I do kind of the the one thing that I guess we can take from Ghost side of things is like she was trying to I mean this is something that she has been struggling for so long and the one person that is trying to help her I can kind of understand why she would have that extreme reaction to like okay obviously what you're doing isn't working anymore I need something more and you're not giving me anything better Mm -hmm. to help so I'm going to do what I need to do so I can kind of see why she would do that Uh, Maybe this also is another call to us to maybe when we are in those moments of 
being a little bit more extreme in our behavior, like something that we normally wouldn't do, maybe to try to like notice that ourselves and take a step back and kind of pull ourselves in and reevaluate, like, why are we doing what we're doing and what is actually causing us to be or act the way that we're acting. For example, if you're hungry and you get kind of snappy and angry when you're hungry, eat a Snickers. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But, you know, kind of evaluate what your needs are and kind of seek out what that need is. If maybe that means reaching out to somebody and to see what they can do to help. I don't know. We're not going very deep on this episode, but that's okay. Well, like I said, it's not it's not really a movie that's set up for that. Yeah. Um it's it's a lighthearted movie. It's a very kind of uh surface level which I think we need. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs from time to time as we talked about in our, you know, the importance of pop culture. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not something to be it's not going to be held up as a as in a very important piece of art in future years. It's going to win 20 It'll be Grammys. Like, yeah, Grammys, that was a, that was I mean, a fun, mo- fun movie, you mm-hmm. know. It's not going to win any Oscars or anything else like that, but or any Emmys or, or Grammys or whatever you were saying. All of them. All of the awards. But, you know, it's, it's one of those movies that will make you feel good. Yeah. 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 So uh, these are the principles that we found in the parable of Ant-Man and the Wasp is that we all need somebody to lean on and that compassion is universal. That even when uh, somebody's being a jerk, that sometimes, you know, it's maybe because they're in a lot of pain and you can find some way to support them. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, yeah, they're just continue to be a jerk. And well, sometimes toxic. people are just jerks because they're jerks. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to brush that off. It, I mean, sometimes people are villains just because they're villains. Exactly. Um, so we've got a lot that we're uh, currently working on. Um, right now, uh, we have watched The Quiet Place. We are going to be talking about that next week. So that's not going to be um, like, in the wind, if we're going to be doing that, we are doing that for sure, because we watched it last week. Um, there is a lot to be said about that movie. Um, I actually have a few ideas of what we're of what I'm going to be talking about, but we'll we'll get there. Is it to be quiet and shut your mouth? No. <laughs> um, it may have a lot to do with social media. Is that uh, you can't really say anything without aliens attacking you? No, I'm. I'm Kidding, I'm stretching that a little bit. I was about to say, hmm, <laughs> that's, that's interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Quiet Place we're going to be talking about next week. We are working on Legion Season 2. We do have a way of actually watching that now. Um, Netflix original movie, Extinction, uh, Mr. Robot Season 3, How It Ends is another Netflix original movie that we're, we're going to be watching. Uh, Seven Seconds was, re- was referred to us by a friend of ours uh, to be watched and to be talked about on the show. Uh, Magician season one, uh, much like the uh, book, uh, starts really slow, but uh, it's now really picked up to where we've we've actually want to continue watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, we're going to put that off for a little bit, obviously because of uh, we need to watch that and watch other things first, but also because uh, Kathy's just started listening to the book. We'll we'll soon, and so I'm hoping that. Well, I haven't actually started listening to the book yet. I'm yes. still on the wait list. Yeah. Okay. And that's why we're going to put it off for a little bit. We've got other things to watch first. <laughs> um, Ozark Season 2, uh, Deadpool 2, uh, f- uh, First Reformed is a movie that uh, came out and not very many people are talking about. But it uh, looks fantastic. I really want to see it. And I think uh, any uh, movie about a small town church and a uh, priest that's an alcoholic might be a good movie for us to talk about on a show. Mm-hmm. Um, Hereditary, uh, Solo. And Won't You Be My Neighbor are all things that we have yet to watch and talk about. I'm already going to cry after you mentioning the last one. Okay. Uh, So if you have any other suggestions for us, you can find us on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, Those are our two main ones that we check regularly. And just let us know if uh, you have any thoughts about that or any about our other shows. Uh, as always, you can also leave us a voicemail at 720-372-3879. Again, that is 720-372-3879. Also, we have an unusual recommendation for you all this week. Um, for those of you who may be not 
the uh, traditional Christian or that uh, you are uh, maybe grew up in an evangelical church and uh, are still kind of questioning your relationship with with faith and with uh, God or the divine or whatever you want to call it. Um, surprisingly, I found a devotional app that for the first time in like 17 years that I'm actually excited about, um, they had this fantastic thread uh, this uh, last week all about how their app is not going to be joining with any of the other traditional Christian publishers because they – promote uh, a lot of what the evangelical church has been promoting, which is a lot of the bad things that the church has been about, like racism and these power systems and all of this other stuff. And I, w- I just, I was blown away by this, by this Twitter thread that I thought, holy cow, this is, this is an app that really focuses on what I believe, yeah. you know, Jesus is talking about and what, you know, I really believe in is that that uh, people of faith should be standing against against these things, these systems in the world that you know treating people badly and and not affirming the LGBTQ plus community or people of other races or women or you know any of these other things. Anyway, I, I encourage you to go check out the app. Uh, th- well, first off, I would love for you to go check out that thread on Twitter. Um, it is actually pinned at the top of the, uh, app's, uh, Twitter feed. So go check that out. It's our Bible app. It's at our Bible app. And it's R as in like, it's ours, not R as in like the letter R. Yeah. It's O W or not O W. Oh my goodness. O U R. <laughs> I am looking right at it and I say W. <laughs> o U R Bible app and, uh, download the app. Um, it's, uh, I checked it out. I know a lot of the names that are in there. Um, one of the, uh, people that I've recommended in previous shows, Chris Stroop is actually, his is the featured, uh, devotional uh, this month. And his is all about how, uh, growing up in evangelical, we can use that kind of to, uh, to grow from there and that how many of us were damaged from that evangelical church and to just move beyond that now. Yeah. Uh, Chris Stroop has been a, a, a huge voice on Twitter for kind of talking against uh, what evangelicals are doing now. And uh, as I talked about last week with the Christo, Christo-fascist movement. Uh, so anyway, I really recommend this app. Go check out that app. The app is free. There is some in-app purchases for other translations of the Bible um, there's devotionals, there's podcasts. And so if you are a non-traditional Christian, if you consider yourself progressive or what have you, or just liberal or uh, agnostic and still questioning, go check out the app. I, I guarantee you it's going to be something that you may be interested in to kind of find out more about yourself, not in a way that it's going to be, oh, join my religion kind of thing, but more just like helping find you your grow. own, find your own growth. Yeah. Yeah. So... With all that being said, we invite you to come and join the conversation. Bye.